is 9.32. Shortly, Mike will have an update on the sport, and Chris, of course, will bring us up to date with the weather. Now, a man who killed his wife but never revealed the whereabouts of her body could be freed from prison this weekend after the Justice Secretary decided not to challenge his parole. Russell Causley murdered his wife, Carol Packman, in 1985. The couple's daughter, Sam Gillingham, wants her father to remain behind bars. She's been talking to our legal correspondent, Dominic Casciani. For 38 years, Sam Gillingham has lived with a question tearing at her soul. How did her father kill her mother? And why won't he say what he did with the body? Today, she's preparing for 79-year-old Russell Causley to leave jail, even though he's never told the full truth about the fate of his wife, Carol Pagman. I don't have an inquest. I don't have a death certificate for my mother. I don't have any of, of those things. You know, she's, she's literally just doesn't exist anymore. Carol Pagman disappeared in 1985. Sam's father had moved his lover into their family home in Bournemouth, later taking her surname. It took police ten years to realise he must have killed his wife. Over a succession of trials and appeals, he said nothing, adding to Sam's pain. I want to find my mother's body still, though. Um, it's been very difficult, and um, I'm hoping that if there's anybody out there who will tell me where my mother is, if you know, then please come forward and tell me. Last December, she finally heard him speak at the first ever public parole hearing, assessing whether he was safe to leave jail. Causley claimed to the panel his former lover had killed Carol, something police long ago ruled out. And as his daughter listened, he said he'd burnt her mother's remains. It was the first time that I'd actually heard my father speak. If anything, it opened up more questions for me. What, what do you think he was trying to do in that hearing? deflect the reality of the sort of person that he actually is. That was the most frustrating thing that I found, to listen and not have somebody from my side to be able to actually challenge from, directly from, the victim's side. The former Victims Commissioner for England and Wales says allowing people like Sam to witness the process needs to be more clearly thought through victims must go into a parole hearing if they're going to attend with their eyes open as to what it is. It isn't about the offence, it's about that person. You must know that that's going to happen. You must have good quality victim support, specialist, counselling to be with you before, after, to see you through it. I don't think that any of that is available now. The parole board says Causley is a liar, but safe to be released. That will happen in days Sam is resigned to that, but wants officials to make her father meet her. What would you ask him? Why? You know, why, why are you continuing to just play these games of control still? Should he ever be released? No. Why not? Because I do not think that um, he is safe to be released. He still is manipulative and controlling. I think that they're wrong. I think their judgment is wrong. I still don't feel that my mother has had justice, and that's uh, a difficult pill to swallow. Off you go. Dominic Kashani, BBC News, Northamptonshire. Good boy. Come on. Nazir Absal is the former Chief Crown Prosecutor for North West England and joins us now to talk more about this. Nazir, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, I think it's really worth kind of talking about mm. who... Who has say over what the parole board decides? Yeah, okay, well, I mean, 60 years ago, we decided that life did not mean life and we abolished execution. And then about a few years ago, we decided that there are some occasions in which the crimes were so heinous that people should get a whole life order. So people like Dale Cregan, who might prosecute for the murder of man to police officers, he will leave prison in a coffin. But the bulk of uh, on, on the side, um, Murder, well, murderers, um, we're talking about several thousand um, in prison right now, will at some point be released. And so the decision as to whether or not they'll be released is taken by the parole board after they've served the minimum sentence that the judge imposed. In Causley's case, that decision was taken by, well, it was taken several times before. Uh, he breached the uh, parole conditions. And on this occasion, the parole board looked at um, 
psychological evidence, um, evidence from people who work with him, uh, evidence about the risk that he uh, he offers or may offer, uh, and what plans were in place to mitigate that risk. And they've formed the view, based on all of that, that he can be released at this stage. Uh, that won't be uh, without conditions, and neither will it be uh, indefinitely. So at some point, he may well, as he has done before, reach those conditions and then be returned to prison. Now, sometimes the law sounds heartless and this is an example of that because you know if, if, I, if i've lost a loved one as the gillinghams have had that you would think well no no he should pay you know for the rest of his life is what happened but i think the law sometimes has to use a brain and this is one of those situations where you can't really win there'll be some people who will be upset what's important and what was really good about this particular case was that we had the very first public hearing so the Gillinghams were in court, well, were able to hear what was being said, um, heard what the parole board had to hear, uh, and then um, listened to what the outcome was. And maybe the decision hasn't been communicated properly, which is why they feel as they do. But at the same time, as, as Vera Bed said, they needed to have been given a great deal of support uh, in this process, which previously uh, was not available to uh, people in such circumstances. So the decision is the right decision. Uh, it's a, it's a, it doesn't feel right. Uh, because they don't feel that justice has been done, uh, but we can't. We've decided as a country that we do not want people in prison for all of their lives uh, when they kill someone. Um, I mean, you've explained that very clearly, and of course there are emotions involved. But there have also been moves before to try to get murderers to say to reveal where a body is. I mean, he he yeah. has um, accepted that he disposed of Carol Packman's body, but ha which it, but it's never been found. Um, he's also um, not admitted guilt um, to the murder of Carol Packman. And when people look at someone who served a sentence for murder, they expect some kind of rehabilitation. They expect, you know, some kind of contrition. And there's nothing being shown here, or at least in those two well, parts. Well, I mean, I don't disagree with you. Um, Helen's law, which, you know, Helen McCourt, I think, has been on your show yes, many times before, yes. um, was brought in because her body was never found. Uh, and... Uh, but unfortunately for um, the Gillinghams, uh, the law came in after uh, Causley had already been released on parole or previously. So it doesn't apply to him. The nobody, no release um, of law, in effect, does not apply to Causley. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it does irk me, and I'm sure it irks all of your viewers, that um, if you haven't admitted responsibility, how can you possibly be re rehabilitated? Uh, first, the first thing to be able to do is to accept you know, responsibility before you start being rehabilitated. Um, but the judgment was made by the parole board here that um, he said enough uh, about his guilt in this case, namely, he, I think he said that he'd uh, taken part in the burning of the body, for example, uh, and there was uh, obviously overwhelming evidence that led to the conviction. So they, they, they formed a view that regardless of what he may have said, or may have said publicly, um, that he has su provided sufficient uh, evidence to them that um, he accepts responsibility, uh, and of course the rehabilitation plan will take account of uh, of, of of that uh, as it moves forward. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm with the getting comes on this, as I would be with anybody in this situation. That you would expect him to have put his hands up entirely to say, yes, this is me. I did this. And this is why I did it, and, and and also, you know, this is where the body is. For example, if he's able to do that uh, before they should release him. But unfortunately. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, that's not been possible in this case. And uh, I hope there's some learning for the future. Nazir Afzal, uh, former Chief Crown Prosecutor for North West England, thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. You're welcome. Let's see, Saturday morning, 9.40.